Hello everyone, our today's topic is analog to digital conversion or in short you can call it ADC. So in most of the cases the signals that you obtain is actually analog and in order to process this signal in our computer we need to convert it to some digital um, signal. So all the signal that we uh, get from nature or anywhere we have to convert it um, to actually binary one zero okay so without conversion you cannot perform digital operations on an analog signal so any analog signal that you grab has to be converted to a combination of one zero that means binary or you can call it digital and that's actually analog to digital conversion or in short ADC okay now before going to ADC we have to understand one very important thing it is called sampling remember in our class we discussed the difference between analog signal and digital signal analog signal is something continuous right that means for every value of time for every t you will get the value of the signal let's call it uh, y that means for every t y exist right but in case of digital signal digital signal is discrete it's not continuous that means you will get the value of digital signal after a certain interval of time now let's take an example to illustrate this um, continuous and discrete signal continuous signal as I have mentioned earlier that it exists for any value of t that means if you are here that means if the value of t is like this it will get a uh, get the value of, of signal uh, if the value of t is like here it will get a different value of the signal and uh, th that means if you go anywhere in the x-axis you will actually get some value in the y-axis any place so this is the property of a continuous signal uh, whatever the value of time is it will definitely get some value of the signal but as you can see here there are some discrete points like these 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 right so these are some discrete points so if you are here then you will get the value of the signal if you are here you will get the value of signal but if you are in between these two time you will not get any value of the signal because the signal is not continuous it has a value at this point and after that it has a value at this point in between these two point there exists no signal so this is the property of discrete signal so obviously this term is a uh, much broad I have just made it uh, short to um, to actually demonstrate the core things here now if we have any analog um, processing device it may handle this signal but if you have a digital device to um, handle the signal let's say uh, if you have a smartphone to actually capture your voice it will not capture it in this manner rather it will actually sample your uh, voice and store it in its memory so uh, what I'm trying to say that uh, your computer or your digital device does not store or does not process this this kind of signal rather it works with uh, some discrete signals that means discrete points okay so we have to know how this continuous signal is converted to a discrete signal and after that we will learn how our computer or any digital device actually converts this discrete signal into a digital signal so before that we must know how we can get a discrete signal from a continuous signal and the process of obtaining this discrete signal from a continuous signal is called sampling now let's say you have a signal like this okay and and what we will do here we will take some uh, sample of the signal so let's take one sample here Let's take another sample here and so on as you can see that I have taken a number of points on our continuous signal 
and these points are actually my discrete points because there is a time interval in between these two points, right? Now here is one interesting thing. Instead of storing this whole signal, what the computer does, the computer actually stores something like this. That means it just stores the information of few individual points. And as you can see that if you have these individual points, you can obviously draw a line through these points, okay? And get back the original signal. So instead of storing this whole thing, the computer actually stores few significant points. And after using a DSC system, the computer can regenerate the original signal from the stored points. Let's say we have a signal like this and I have drawn two versions of the same signal. That means this signal and this signal is same. What I will do here, I will actually change the number of samples for this and this signals. Let's say in this signal, we are taking samples here, then here, then let's say here and say here and in this signal we are taking a bit more amount of points that means for the first signal we have captured only one two three four four points on the signal but on the second version we are taking a lot more samples from from the signal so it's like uh, let's say you have a classroom and I want to test how many students are good and how many students are bad if there are 10 or 20 students in the class uh, what I can do um, I can actually check individual students and um, tell whether the students are good or not. But say you have one lakh student in a classroom. At that time, you cannot check individual students. Rather, you will take some samples. Okay. So after checking the samples, you can uh, actually um, tell approximately what percentage of the students are good and what percentage of the students are bad and obviously it will depend on the amount of samples if you take more samples then you will get more accurate um, information regarding the class but if you take very small amount of sample then it will be problematic because um, it may give you wrong uh, wrong estimation like this there are only one, two, three, four, four samples that I took here. But in this signal, there are one, two, three, four, a lot more samples that I took here. So obviously, this signal or these samples will give us a bit more correct information regarding the signal. But here, these few points cannot give us the accurate information. So I can uh, demonstrate it like this. So as you can see that I have the footprints of the points of, of, of these points because I have used a fountain pen and the ink leaves some traces in the bottom of my page. So if I connect these dots then I will get a signal like this right. But if I connect these dots I will get a signal like this right. So now you tell me which one which one is more accurate this one or this one remember our original signal was this and we actually took sample from the same signal this and uh, this signal and this signal was same just the number of sample here is less and the number of sample here is more so the less sample gave us this and the more sample gave us this and obviously this was our original signal and this was this is not that means if you 
do not take sufficient amount of samples from a signal you will not get the original original signal rather you will get some uh, distorted signal now the question is what should be the frequency of sampling that means how many samples do I need to capture from the signal so fortunately we have a special criteria called Nyquist, uh, Nyquist sampling theorem to determine the safe frequency or safe sampling frequency so the Nyquist sampling theorem tells us that if a message signal or if the main signal has a frequency of FM then the sampling frequency or FS must be greater than or equal to twice times of FM let's uh, take an example say you have a signal which is 50 Hertz for a 50 Hertz signal the frequency or the speed of taking the samples should be FS equals to 2 times 50 Hertz or 100 Hertz minimum so the Nyquist theorem actually tells us what should be the minimum sampling frequency for a particular uh, signal so obviously if the sampling frequency is more than 100 Hertz so it means that it will take more samples then there will be no problem but if the sampling frequency is less than this 100 Hertz for a 50 Hertz signal then you will not get the original signal back it will become distorted let's take another example let's say you have a signal like this y equals to sine 100 pi t now we want to determine what should be the sampling frequency for this signal so remember any progressive uh, wave can be written as y equals to sine twice pi ft remember so if we compare these two signal so the coefficient of t here is 100 pi the coefficient of t here is twice pi f so we can tell that twice pi f is actually 100 pi so we can determine the value of f which is again 50 hertz since this is the frequency of the message now the sampling frequency fs will be twice times of the signal frequency f so which is 2 into 50 is equals to 100 hertz minimum uh, let's say you ha you, you are um, you are in some uh, signal which is 89.6 megahertz now for a signal which has a frequency of 89.6 megahertz the sampling frequency must be greater than or equals to 2 into 89.6 megahertz that means if it's equal to 2 into 89.6 megahertz it's okay if it's greater than this 2 into 89.6 megahertz then it's also okay but if it is less than this value then it will create distortion so this is actually the Nyquist sampling theorem that's all for today as few of you have requested me to make short videos because it is um, easy to concentrate on short videos that's why I am not um, elaborating this video anymore so that's all for today We'll meet in another lecture and till then stay safe.